All right, good Thursday morning, everyone. It is time to talk about the markets with Jim Cramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And Jim, you bring up an important point on CNBC when it comes to Bitcoin. Where are the sellers? Yeah, you know what's funny, Scott? Uh, typically, when you have an asset, people either create more of that asset as it goes up, like a secondary mm. offering. But you have to mine Bitcoin. It's a very mysterious way to get more. And typically, when you have something that you don't even have tax uh, consequences, uh, and you see it go up enough, you would take some off the table. There seems to be a tremendous absence of sellers at this level, as if many people feel it's about to go to 25,000 or 50,000. So the buyers have tremendous belief, and they're uh, also an element of cornering, I believe, when you see some of these hedge funds know that there's natural buyers out of, say, Venezuela, which has been a big buyer of it, or China, or any country that, where people feel that their own currency uh, may lose value. Uh, so you've got natural buyers, and then you have people who are hoarding it. It's why I say it's not investable. You're really betting on the mechanics of the market, that there's no new supply coming in, and there's hoarding. It would be as if a, a huge number of people decided that since gold, we discover 1% new gold a year, that they were going to just corner gold. But you know, what's most interesting is gold is the big loser in this. That had been the repository of when you were worried because of the uh, very, very ingenious blockchain system where there is tremendous certainty that you get uh, this rather, again, ethereal currency. I don't mean Ethereum. Uh, Bitcoin is very popular and I'm not trying to underplay Bitcoin. I'm not trying to underplay blockchain, but this is something that could go dramatically higher because there are no sellers. Blockchain, blockchain, blockchain. <laughs> All right, Jim, there are reports that Bob Iger could stay on as CEO past 2019 if the Fox deal succeeds. You know, what's interesting is uh, my colleague David Faber also said that it's a good chance he might run for president. Oh. Uh, so when Disney, if they do get Fox, uh, the company would be in great hands. He could integrate the company and then uh, by, by 2020 run for president. Uh, and I think that it's worth watching that antitrust seems to be getting in the way. It's a continual theme. Uh, another parent company of uh, another company I work for, uh, you know, Comcast, sure. is uh, uh, in there wanting to buy assets too. I think that's important. The most important thing here, though, is if you look at the Aetna deal and you look at the Disney Fox deal, the, the, uh, the targets don't go up as much as they used to. And the acquirer, I mean, Disney went down yesterday, CBS is down badly because people just say it's going to take forever and it's going to tie up your business. So I'm hoping that Time Warner. ATT is a one-off situation. Antitrust will not be the obstacle to getting deals done, but right now it looks like it is. Huh. Interesting. All right, Jim, we're seeing that GE turnaround strategy take place, 12,000 job cuts and power. Yeah, I mean, I think that they're trying to get ahead of what is a uh, secular decline in the power industry. And we talk about how GE bought oil and gas at the top. We talk about how GE sold finance at the low. What we don't talk about enough is that they doubled down on power at the peak of power when we thought that there was going to be a secular wave of turbines being put up to get away from coal. It turns out that the actual footprint of power, the amount of power that is needed, uh, has to some degree moderated. And, and so the, the doubling down on power was a mistake. And by the way, in terms of um, oil and gas, we saw Chevron announce its uh, exploration budget, and it's down again. Uh, Action Alert's own Schlumberger. Uh, Schlumberger's ready for that. But again, what you need to see is power uh, as fossil fuels go higher in order for GE to dispose things properly. So your biggest bet on GE is that oil goes to 65, 70. It may be at this moment the most levered to energy of any company I follow, which is why I continue to call it an oil, a, a fuel hedge fund and drag. And make no mistake about it, power is about natural gas and some alternatives that are coming down in value. So uh, I don't know how you outrun the decline in power. I don't know how you outrun the decline in oil and gas unless oil and gas goes up substantially. And you discussed all this on your incredible conference call yesterday. People can rewatch that on ActionAlertsPlus.com. Thank you very much. To and that Jim, out. we'll we'll end with uh, your incredible interview tonight on Mad Money with the Boeing CEO. Yeah, I mean, Mr. Mullenberg has had a low profile, and uh, I talk about the notion of the stock going to 400. 
Uh, why? Because the uh, pastiche of business uh, is two-thirds commercial, a third defense. Defense is on fire. Commercial is extraordinary, an amazing background, and uh, amazing uh, backlog. And the most incredible thing about Boeing, they're making many more planes per week and month. Uh, and they're making it more efficient. Uh, so the profit margin is going up. Uh, Mr. Mulberg said the most important thing for Boeing would be tax reform, where they would take the profit uh, and they would not just dividend it. They have they, they boosted the dividend uh, last four years, 20% a year. Uh, they've done an amazing buyback because they have a lot of cash flow. But what they would do is hire and build. And uh, I think it's important to see uh, one of the largest companies in the world committed to hiring and building at a time when people are very cynical about what would happen with tax reform. So watch Boeing, the stock goes higher, best performer in the Dow. All right, and watch tonight, Mad Money, 6 Thank p.m. You, Eastern. Thank you. All right, that's it for Jim and I for right now, but we're going to continue the conversation on actionalertsplus.com. Only for uh, club members, yes. and I think that's important. Uh, as I said in our conference call yesterday, the club is something that is near and dear to us and they deserve special videos. They start today. Right now, we hope you join us there. Thanks everybody.